Alleluia. Alleluia. What a great delight that is. May your grants unto our minds the simplicity that we can operate in the power of the Ruach of Yah. That all things he commands us concerning the Torah, we can do that. What a great blessing. It is why Yahshua could not leave us barren. He could not leave us alone. He said, it is expedient. It is most important for you that I go away. For if I ascend not into Hashem I am, then the Abba cannot send the Ruach HaChodash, the spirit of his power, the life of his testimony, the witness of Yahshua HaMashiach, that through that testimony of revelation, he opens our minds to the tremendous mysteries of the Abba. And as we understand the simplicity of those mysteries, we rejoice greatly. But we know without a doubt that our Redeemer lives. And he is real in us. By the power of Yahshua HaMashiach, I rejoice, Yisrael. I'm not a man of wealth when it comes to material things, but I have more than I will ever use in this lifetime. So there is nothing that I'm asking for. He grants bread today, water to drink. For all I know, I am in reasonable health. I will not complain. I am alive. As the old Kirushim would say, one more day he has granted me that I may brach, I may bow down, I may lift up, I may esteem the majesty of his name that is greater than any name upon the heavens and upon the earth. And not only that, but he grants unto us Yisrael that we can carry the mandate of that name. For in the power of that name, we can overcome all things. For in the power of that name, we see the Yoshiach, his salvation, Yoshua HaMashiach. And for that, I delight greatly with the abundance of fervor unto Yah. Again, I want to greet you all that have joined us as we gather here in Yerushalayim, the city, the place where his Shalom is taught. For he teach us in the midst of all the calamities to rejoice in his Shalom, his Shalom. So we rejoice in the comfort of the resolves of all Maria that as the old ones will say, all is well. Hallelujah. All is well. I don't care how it appears, how it seems, it's all well. I don't care what the battle is, what my constraints are, what my czar, the place that refines me, all is well. As they would say often, I have nothing to complain about. I know I don't. I'm alive this morning. I can eat. I was able to walk over here. Ill regardless if I had a pain or two, I was able. Hallelujah. And for that, I rejoice greatly. I do want to greet you again that have joined us and say to my precious Ach there in Birkhead, Scotland, our Ach Dawi Nesha and his family. I wrote him a letter the other day because his financial resources are limited. Very small amount he gets. And I said in the letter to my Ach Dawids, I said, my friend, and also on last Shabbat, we received a letter from a family, Ach Dawid and his wife Gloria, from London. They wrote to us to say how that their hearts were opened so abundantly when Yah opened up the avenue of this website to them. So we appreciate the labor, not only the financial resolves that come from you all, but the hands of our Ach Simeon, his labor, Yah being as they constantly are abreast of things and keep things afloat. I do appreciate that much. Hallelujah. And so in the response to my letter to uh, Dawid, my Ach Dawid, I said, I know your 
limited resources because he has told me how much money he gets. He is a man that is incapacitated. But the offerings that he sends, it is a tremendous strain upon him. And I said, my friend, I will not take the gifts that you have placed in your heart. I will not use them to buy one ounce of thread or a piece of material. In essence, my words, but I will utilize them for the kingdom mission because I know what it takes for him to give the offerings that he sent. And he responded that his delight is abundantly refreshed, that even the smallness of his offerings, there is no small offering. What a man sacrifices, when he denies self and certain things in his household, no offering is small. I don't care what the numeric appeal may be, but it is not a small offering. He said, for the abundance of the riches and the much that I receive from Teshua community, then this is just a small thing that I can do. But it is a great thing, my Ach. And I want to speak that to you this morning there in Scotland, in Birkhead, Scotland, where he lives, on the ocean with him and his family. They don't rob the people in nations like that, like they do in America. There are people that have small little squatter shacks on the rivers and the oceans, and nobody tried to implode their place, destroy it. But only in this vile, wicked nation that is so corrupt, it is one of the most vilest of nations, and I'm not going to stop talking about the wickedness, the corruption, what has been inbred in the mind of the people and in the minds of the collectiveness of Yisrael, that it is a mind that it is insidious, a mind that despises the Torah. So you have the many that are saying that the Torah is not relevant. What a damnable, twisted deduction of the Chasvein. Your sure taught, and he preached Torah. Damn their goddess grace because she doesn't mean a damn thing to me. It is by the Naham, only the mercies of Yah. It is by his Naham, not some damnable Jezonite spirit of the goddess grace, but it is by his Naham that his Hasid, his uh, mercies are spread abroad. Uh, Upon a people that is undeserving. We're not deserving of the fair play of Yah. Because we have not operated in the fairness of his doctrine. That he commands us. His teachings to discipline us. To correct us. To instruct us. To guide us to the abundance of his much. That he has for Yisrael. And yet we fail to reach the plateau whereby our minds are consumed with him, our delight, our actions. And everything that we do reverberate the testimony, reverberate the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach, that he is real. As the old ones would say, he is real. And I can feel him in my nephesh. Yes, Yah is real. I, yada, I have the experience to testify that he is real. He is working in me. It is his Torah, the power, the witness, the evidence of Torah, that we can bring the clean offering before Yah, that we can lift up hands that are pure and clean, that our hands are not stained with dumb sin, that every kind of polluted activity that we have carried out with our yads, our hands, yet we can lift up an offering that is sincere and pure according to his covenant delight. He has not done away with that. He intends he must receive sacrificial offerings. He must receive offerings. And so he commands us as a nation of people, I want you, as you understand the legitimacy of Torah, as you understand the statutes, the ordinance, the finite detail, that I gave unto the house of Levi, that they may interpret and give unto you.
And as you understand the witness of that through the power of your Shua, that living testimony, then you bring the sacrifice, the offering of Toda before Yah, and it is one uh, of Toda, it is one of Yada, because we actually, uh, we Shaha, we worship Yah in the midst of our appreciation uh, unto Him. If we don't understand that, let's watch the world and see how they appreciate things, how they dance and sing, uh, and they revel when their team win, they revel, they tear down, they set barn fires. We need to let the fire of the Torah of Yah burning us that way. That we tear down the strongholds of hell. We tear down the thoughts and the concepts that cause us to abandon the Torah of all Maria. That's what we must do, Yisrael. That's what the world does. They rejoice. They drink their spirits and we must drink out of the living well. We must drink from the Sisram, the water fountain. And there is only one living well, that is the Torah of Yah. These are deceitful men. These are men that are not of Yah. They have not the Ru'ach of Omar Yah. For Yahshua came with any testimony outside of the parameter of the Torah, they would not even have to impel him. Because they would have known that this man spoke a lie for it was not based upon the principles the outline of Torah if anyone come teaching any other doctrine except the doctrine of Torah he is a liar and a thief we are not removed from the Torah of Yah he has simply opened up the beauty of the living power of Torah every word that he speaks is ruach. it is a living power Everything Yah speaks, you know it's a living power. When he says, let there be awe and there was light. Tell me. You can't even create nothing out of your daba. But the Debraim, the words of Yah said, let bestow light, the awe and the light was light. I don't understand what light is. Man may try to express it in the elements of it is. But Yah says, uh, let there be light. He can only express the construct, what he has constructed with according to elements uh, and, and, and paradigms, uh, what he believes is light. But Yah said, let there be light. That's hidden from the world. And the only way he could reveal that unto Yisrael was the light uh, of his Torah in a body of clay. Uh, Yoshua Hamashiach. That he has truly granted his power unto Yisrael that we can do all things. That strengthen the body of Yisrael. Hallelujah. In many places that's enough preaching for today. They're ready to sit down. They have done their job. 16 minutes, 18 minutes, 32 minutes, and that's it. Well, I'm a little stronger than that. I have a little more tenacity. Hallelujah. That is a cool glass of water this morning. We're going to get into the bath water now, all right? Again, my Akhtai, we, we appreciate all that you have done, and there are others, but I wanted to point out the significance of the offerings of this man. I know what he gets each month, each week. I understand that the systems or the social systems in other nations are not like this one here. It is far from it. It is not like this nation here as far as the social parish shoots that this nation has. And all of that is crumbling to Yisrael. We must trust Badakh with all of our love, our lib, our liba, our laba, our mind, we must trust Almighty Yah, even all of our kilia, the natural organ, the mind, the kilia. We must trust Almighty Yah. And it must be evident by the fruit that we bear, the fruits of our lives, Yisrael. 
This is a generation of vipers and serpents. It is a generation of the adulteress and the adulterer. It is a generation that cannot hear the commands of Almighty Yah. Yahshua spoke in a place that he said in Matiti Yah. He called those that were supposed to be students of Torah, men that through their own vile, insidious uh, ways, uh, had tried to break down the very order of Torah to uh, instruct us in matters that was far removed from Torah to bear us down, to make the yoke heavy, that it become a, a yoke and a burden that was so heavy that we could not bear. And on this occasion, he says unto the stripes and Pharisees, he says, Oh, you generations of vipers, you are serpents. And we know the ordeal of the first serpent that Chava dealt with. He said, you are a generation of nothing but vipers, you are serpents. And how can you? Out of a love that is evil, uh, speak that which is tough. For out of the abundance of the labor, the heart, the mind, uh, the fifth, the tongue, the lotion, the mouth, it speaks. For out of that abundance does it speak. How can one that is evil... Uh, Speak the things that are tough. And the one that is tough speak the things that are tough. You cannot. For out of the abundance of the love, the mouth speak. Out of the abundance of the labor, the intelligent mind or the thinking, the formation of concepts and ideas, how they're created within the mind, then uh, our faith, our language, speak. And this is a generation that the construct, the elements, the things that have formed the Laba or the Laba, it is a mind that is formed and created. It is a mind that is insidious and vile. It is a mind that is the enemy of the mind of Almighty Yom. And I want to speak from that concept today. The mind that is the enemy of Almighty Yom. Not your kilia. Not this physical thing that is nothing but a pile of cholesterol, of fatness. Yet there's a mind. It is shapen. It is formed, and the Torah is explicit uh, and its revelation as to how this mind is formed. It shows us the concept of this mind. It shows us the identity of this mind. And if the Torah shows us that we must be informed, that we guard the mind of Yeshua HaMashiach against the very construct of this most vile, wicked, and insidious mind. I want to define by several resources. And I will tell you where I got this or the definitives of that from. I want to define the word enemy. It is vitally important because the word enemy, enemies, adversaries, adversary, it is used more than 700 times in the Torah. And if Yah repeats a specific word redundantly, redundantly, uh, it is vitally important for us to understand the finite details of it. I'm not talking about brushing over the words. Uh, I'm talking about understanding uh, the details, uh, understanding the, the ingredients uh, of what this word implies. Uh, how it operates uh, and what is the origin and the creation of this thing. We must, Yisraya. There are people that can tell you every kind of designer's clothing. Yet they cannot tell you the value, the importance of the Torah. 
the writings of the wisdom of Yah. That's what Torah is. It is the writing of his wisdom. And his wisdom is much more profound than my wisdom or your wisdom. His da'at, his ability to know, to understand, to discern uh, is much greater than all of ours collectively. And not only that, but the world that has been, is, uh, is greater than all of that. With all of the wisdom that we think we possess and what the world has uh, pursued, uh, it will not even feel a thimble uh, in the presence of Almighty Yah. It is as dung. It has no value at all. There is no substance to it at all uh, unless it is created by the image uh, or the reflection of Torah is not worth a damn thing. It has no value at all. The mind, that is the enemy uh, of Almighty Yah, the construct. What is an enemy? I want to take from these very respectable uh, uh, choices of definitive uh, from the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. It said, one that seeks to injure, that that's what an enemy is. One that seeks to injure, one that seeks to overthrow, uh, or the failure of a person or thing, nation, to which he or she or that thing oppose. So the ultimate conquest of an enemy uh, is to overthrow, to disdain, uh, to violate, uh, and to bring down to the ashes of destruction. That is what Miriam Webster is implying. Something that is injurious, that injures you, uh, something that harms you, uh, and above all that it is deadly. Now that is the mind of the enemy of Yah. It is a mind that assault against Yah in every aspect to destroy, to dismantle, uh, to destroy the effectiveness of the Torah and bring it down to the gates of hell. But the mind will not succeed over the mind of your Shur HaMashiach. Another definitive from dictionary comma, it says, a person who feels hatred for false or harmful designs against one isn't this nation all about that i was listening to mr new gingrich this morning in a little speech about a minute he made the statement that the united nation will not tell america what to do because we're sovereign and I said as I listened, what a fat, greedy, dirty bastard. Because you have imposed that upon Libya through the arm of the United Nations. You have imposed that upon Egypt. And they were sovereign nations. You have robbed Greece. That Oxymion and I was listening to the other day. That even uh, the prime minister who was thrown out of office said that we had to mortgage not only the land of Greece, but even the people to pay back the loan. We don't hear that. To the World Banks, we had to mortgage our babies, our children. They have been sold under the powers of this world. This is the concept. Of this wicked nation. It creates the mind of the enemy. Against Torah. Against Yah. One that is. That foster harmful designs against. Or enrage in antagonistic activities. Against another or foe. That the concept of one's mind. Is to be aggressively with all. That is in their strength. To destroy, to bring down, and to do harm unto anyone that opposes their mandate, their desire. We are nation, Yisrael, that oppose you. And so we allow our imaginations and the concepts of our minds to oppose him. I want to define this that I can bring clarity to that mind. That enemy mind of Yah. And how insidious it is. And how it works against our own profitability. That we may prosper. You say, well, uh, 
I have never been, I am not an enemy of Yahweh. Well, the Torah will judge us all in that matter. It will show us whether our minds or the mind of the enemy, the creation of that mind, what has created our concepts, what has created our logics, and what is the strength of the desire of our bosom. We will see as I proceed. Online etymology dictionary, it declares that an enemy is an adversary, a foe. I was amazed at the next definitive that it opened up. It said demon. It is a demon. It is that which is demonic. We must understand how our minds are shaped And what things that motivates us. It says an adversary, a foe, a demon, the devil, the devil from the Latin imbiscus to be hostile or unfriendly. That that is the origin of the word demon or enemy in the English vernacular. But I will get into the depths of that uh, Yisraya concerning uh, the definitive what Yah says and what the Hebraic teaching teach us. From the most reputable Oxford Dictionary, it says a person who is actively opposed or hostile to someone or something. We have never been hostile toward Yah, have we? When the messenger of Yah spoke unto Yisra'ya Moshe, the people rose up in their voices. Just like Jonas, uh, Yanas and Yambrisa, when they were stood Moshe. Just like Korah, Abaram and Dathan, when they resist the messenger of Omariyam. And the earth cleaved and opened up. And took them all down into hell alive. And one of the most prestigious dictionaries is the Cambridge Dictionary. I am defining this to show you that the witness of this definitive. You cannot deny it. That we understand the mind of an enemy, how it is shaped. From the most prestigious and distinguished scholarship work of uh, literary form uh, from the Cambridge Dictionary, it defines an enemy, a person who hates or opposes another person and tries to harm them or stop them from doing uh, something. One of the greatest oppositions against Yah, to try to oppose and stop him, it is the Leba, it is the Lib, it is the Leba, it is the mind of Yisrael, it is the mind of man that oppose him continuously. It is the mind that assaults Yah, that's what we have this vile, unclean spirit today that's denouncing Torah, denouncing the commands of Yah, this is what Torah is based upon, the mitzvah. And that's why there is no law of sadiq, of the righteousness of Yah in them. They will do anything. They will lie. They will commit every kind of egregious sin there is against Omar Yah. For the minds and the eyes of those that pursue their wisdom, they are blinded. And they have no enthusiasm for the things of Yah, they're dead. Because of the trespasses against Torah and they're dead in sin. Hallelujah. I want to begin with the profound utterance of Jo'ul. Riding onto the scattered house of Yisraeli throughout the very captivity of Rome in the book of Romeo. It says here in the seventh chapter, verse 14. 
I want to open your understanding, Yisra'ah, to the state of this carnal mind or this carnal mind of enmity. And what the Torah expresses concerning this mind and show you what it is compared to what a carnal mind is. I know what we have been taught. Sir. I know the concept of that, what we have all preached, but it's greater than that. And the only way we're going to understand that is we must define everything that Yah speaks. Every word that He speaks is precious unto Yisra'ah. You cannot define this uh, in a literary or a novel form. Every word that Yah speaks, it is pure. We that are Yisra'ah, we take refuge in that comfort. And what he instructs us in. Shaul says, here in the book of Romeo, Romans chapter 7 and verse 14. He begins the first three words, for we know or we yada. There's a revelation we have experienced. When one yada, it is because the profoundness of that revelation has been revealed. And the yada, they rejoice in the magnitude of that profound truth. So when we truly yada, I know ya, as the old ones would say, I know that I know that I know. They were saying, I have experience to a depth, I have wisdom of ya to a depth, that my heart is overjoyed and it delights constantly in the presence of ya. For we yada, we know that the Torah, it is a living book. It is a living right. It is spiritual. It is the power of the Ruach of Yah. The words Yahshua said, I speak unto you. They are spirit, they are Ruach, and they are life. And we know that Torah is the substance of the life, the Hyd, or the Hyil of Yah. His life, his strength, that did not evolve from anything but Him. And that is what the Torah is. It has not evolved by the accum of man, his speech, his ability to write. It came by the power of the revelation of Yah through his Ruach. No man has seen him. No man has looked upon Yah and lived. And yet he has given us the living power of his essence, Yisra'ah. For we Yada. How can one say that the Torah is not spiritual? I will show us why. For we know that the Torah is spiritual. But he says that I am mishkab, I am carnal. Is that not what he says? Uh, soul under sin. He said my nature is one of the appetite of a beast. I have no nature of Yah. And we cannot possess that nature unless we have the spiritual laws, the spiritual Torah of Yah abiding in us. He said that I am carnal, Mishka, Mishka. And my inquisitive desire to understand, I said, Yah, it is here. But there is more to that than what we have taught. We have been taught. So I began to search out the word carnal. You're not going to find it in the old covenant. So they had to translate mishkab to carnal. I will show you what it is related to. Shaul says that for the desire of sin is there. I am carnal soul under sin. I want to give reference of the Mishkab. I want to define that, show you in text, in Torah. I must teach this and lay this platform for you to understand the Leba, the training of one's conscience, of one's heart, how it is constructed or shaped, how it is formed, it is created by the elements of darkness to represent the kingdom of hell in the bosom of Yisrael. We must understand. You cannot graduate until you understand the elementaries. 
We must understand the elementaries first. That's our problem. We hear a thing uh, and we think we have the substance of it. We repeat it uh, and we have not studied out the matter of the issue. And the enemy knows that. So he takes those that are unlearned it and those that spend no time with Yah and yet they will hear something and they take it and they run with it. Hallelujah. No, I don't challenge my ach, I don't challenge the messenger, but I take what they say and I search the Torah to understand the, the finite detail of the matter. And so when I speak on it, I want to speak on it with a greater depth than you spoke on it the time before. You understand? Hallelujah. I want to give you some emphasis or to compare this word mishchab in the context of Torah. Bereshit. Genesis chapter 49 verse 3. This is when Yaakov, he called his sons to berach them. And that not only that he called them to pour out his berachaya upon them, the blessings of the riches of Yah's knowledge upon them. And not only that he wanted to give us an understanding Yah of this carnal or this mishkab mindset of Yisrael. He says here in verse 3, as he grants unto Reuban, 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 he was the son that uh, when Yaakov, when he was birthed, he said, Behold, a blessing from Yah, a son. He says to Reuban, Reuban, he said, You are my Bechor, you are my firstborn. You are the street or the progeneration of my loins. You are my firstborn. He says, you are my koach, you are my might. You are the strength of my progeneration. He said, you are the reshit, you are the begetting. You are the best, you are the chief as of my ruach. You are my reshit, of my regeneration, my own. And that is what regeneration is, my own. Just like we spell the word own, O-W-N. My own. You are the regeneration of the strength of my vigor, my power, the results uh, of my beauty. You are the firstborn. You are my bechor. You are the firstborn of that, of my strength. He said, you are the yetter. You are the excellence of my dignity. Yeah? He says, and you are the excellence of my, as of my power, my strong might, my force. And you know where my power has come from. It has come from Almighty God. You are the, you are the stamp of that. You are, Ruban, you are the stamp of my regenerative power, of my name, of the nation of Yisrael. You're that strength. But he says unto him, he says, you are pachaz, you are unstable you're reckless. You're wantonness. You have no character at all. Your mind is unbridled. He said, you are unstable. Hear me, Yisrael. You are unstable as water. Ruban. Behold, a son. You see that? Ruban. Behold, a son. The firstborn of Yaakov, the hill, supplanter, Ruban. He says, you're unstable as water. He said, you shall not yatta, you shall not excel. You shall not excel, Ruban. And the reason why, because you went upon your avats, Mishkab, the bed of your father. You went upon his bed, then you hala, you defile, you violated the covenant unto Yisrael. You violated the covenant of the father. That's why the Torah instructs us that when the Hoish woman sees a, a man that is simple for a folly, uh, she beckons him uh, and she says, come and lie with me uh, upon my mishkab. That's what wisdom teaches us. And that's the carnal state we have laid in bed with every kind of idolatrous uh, vile thing there is. We have copulated with every kind of unclean damn spirit that is imaginable. Uh, 
They've gone into the idolatrous whole houses, the dens uh, of, uh, of corruption and uncleanliness. And it has created the zero of the seed. Uh, the soul went forth, the soul, the tau seed. And also how Shatan sold uh, the tares. And the only way that this is going to be rid of our minds uh, is the power of the testimony of Yahshua. It must become real. It must become sincere that no lying, no corruption, we cannot sin. There cannot be a willingness to transgress the Torah. We lie, we cheat, we do things that are wicked. We're facetious, we're phony, we're corrupt. And the reason we act that way because it has been perpetrated in the mind that is an enemy against Yah. Well, I will bring it home. I will bring the details of this. I want to show you the nature and the construct of what a carnal mind is. He said, you can lie. You lay upon your avat's bed. You defile the bed of your father. You defile it. And you, you, you defile it. You, you went upon your avat's bed. Then defile you chala. You violated the covenant of Yisrael. And not only that, but you wounded and you, and you fatally tried to destroy him. You violated uh, the covenant because you went up to your avat's bed, then defiled you it. He went upon up to my couch. And that's the nature of the carnal disposition. You must understand that the carnal mind, it is an unstable mind. It defiles the bed uh, or the mishkab of Almighty Yah. It is an unclean mind. It is the conscience of that mind. Uh, it has no concept uh, of what covenant uh, relationship is. It has no passion for the things of Yah. And the only way our minds are going to be developed it must be developed by the teaching uh, of Torah, the hearing of Torah. Yeah. Yahshua did not yeah. teach out of some strange book. Because if he had taught out of a strange book, it would have brought no witness to whom he was. He did not preach out of a book that was estranged from the prophets or the nobi of Yah. He had to declare the truth out of Torah to bring the witness of the power of Yah unto Yisrael. And that mind that had been shaped by Torah, they knew that this was the revelation of the power of Yah. For Yisrael in the midst of all of our czar or tribulations and trials and great afflictions. They knew that this was the resolve of Almighty Yah. So Ruban, you are unstable as water. You're the firstborn. You have no stability. It's almost like us as a people. We hear something, we run with it, and we think we become an expert on the matter. And that's not so. A man must labor. He must lahak. He must study. The Torah of Yah. You're not going to receive anything about your little, because of your little emotional tyrants. You're not going to receive anything because you say you're praying. Because when a man is a student and meditating upon the Torah, he prays day and night. His man is in a state of pala. He walks with Yah. He talks with Yah. Yah tells him he is his own. So that's what that mind does. It is not a moment or a time of the day that we pray. I would that all men everywhere lift up Kados hands and pray constantly unto Yah. Yeah. When a man has a light and the witness of Yahshua, there's a, there's a burning inferno in his eyes. In his presence, he's not some little weakling of an effeminate man. It's a matter of strength. I will, man. And I'm not talking about some physical presence either. It's greater than that. It's much more pulsating and profound than that. The word mishkan, mishkan, it is one that one defies and defiles. And that's what the nature of the natural mind does. It defiles. It defiles. The very commands of Yah. It begins to inject. 
it begins to deduct according to one's own wickedness. When a man's mind is not a mind that has studied the Torah, he cannot deduct, he cannot aggressively understand the mandate of the Torah. He can only understand it by the concepts of his own natural intellectual mind. His skill here, his skill here, not his labor, huh? not the mind that operates in the intellectual uh, pursuits uh, of the Torah of Yahweh the Rock. Not a heart that pants after the knowledge of the Torah as a deer pants or, or he digs for water. But the beast is hungry, will dig down to the depths of the earth to find uh, that moistle of water, the moistness uh, to his lips. Uh, where a man spends no time aggressively digging into the Torah of Yah, yet he digs into the television guide and understands what's on that. But he doesn't know what's in the Torah. He's not a man that has the heart of Yah. And the result of that, he will always lie upon his bed and watch television. And then he will lie upon his couch. I know that one. I've experienced that greater than any man. He will lie upon his bed. And in their home city, they have in the bedroom. Because that is the power to shape the minds. To shape the carnal desire. To create the mind that is an enemy against Yah. The mind that is an enemy of Yah. I shall move forward. Hallelujah. We must understand, Yisra'ya, that uh, the beginning of the birth of this mind, uh, it is shaped by one of the most powerful spirits that we deal with daily. I want to read from the book of Yeskel, Ezekiah. Hallelujah. And this is how that mind is shaped, Yisra'ya, and that's why we're always seeking uh, after this spirit. Yah says unto Yisra'ya in Yeskel, Ezekiah, 23 verse 17, he said, and the Babylonians, they came or they bore. When you see the word come, uh, come to, uh, come in, from here, it is hayil, or it is bo. Bo is to enter in, to come in. Uh, it is like a man and his wife, when he bo, he enter in. Uh, he says, uh, and the Babylonians, they came in, they bo, they entered in upon the bed. Uh, they came to her, Mishka. He's talking about Yehuda, Yisrael. And upon our Mishka, Babylon comes. We sat there with computers in our bedroom all night, clicking, crunching. Hallelujah. And Babel, the Ruach of Babel has entered in. Has Bo has come in uh, into her Mishka, her bed. There's a very powerful dynamic teaching on this. Ezekiel 23, 17. But because of time, I will not teach on the depths of this Mishkab today. I will at a lot of time. He says, and Babylon, we know what Babel is. It is the confusion of one's mind. It is a state of confusion. And we know that the mind of Yah, he will keep that mind that is stayed on him in the Tomim of the perfect Shulam. We keep that mind settled. He will keep that labor filled with confidence. In him. And so we as Yisrael, we have gone, we have allowed Babel to enter in that spirit. And she has come upon our bed because upon our beds are miscombed. Everything is about Babel. We think about things and getting and having and, and more. This is the tremendous spiritual battle that we're in. And our leaders did not prepare us properly. They did not prepare our labor. They did not prepare our love. And we as leaders, we are pursued in the same direct that they taught us. Because we were shiftless and lazy as hell. We could not hear the quiet voice of a simple one speak. And because of that, we missed the vital importance of the things of Yah. Unless we become as one of these little ones. When I did it into the kingdom. 
I said to one of the little ones this week, he brought me a gift. When I came to the dining hall, the gift was upon the table. And when I looked at the gift, I said, I moved it to the side and my Isha said, that's for you. It's a beautiful little gift in a holder. And so when I pulled one out, I said, who got me this? Because I was very impressed with it. The very thing that I wanted to purchase some more of. And I said to this little one, you didn't pick this out for me, did you? And he replied, yes. I said, no, your avat did that. No. He said, this, what I got you. Well, I had said the next time I go out, this is what I need because I like these pens. I like them because they're permanent. You understand, Yisraya? And this is what I shall acquire for me. And yet, uh, we delight ourselves in Omati Yah. It is the small things that speak with greater volume. It is the ingenuity of the hearts, the demand of one's ruach, that even Yah can speak to a mind like that. And because we as leaders, uh, we have not heard the cry. We've exalted ourselves to think that we are in tune with Yah, and we have not learned a damn thing. And so that's why the people are ignorant. Sin is rapidly among Israel, and it ought not to be. There's a reason why. I'm going to drive the hell out of the devil, because he's going to drive the hell out of me. If I die, I die in the battle. He's going to drive you. You're going to drive him and he's going to drive you either way. You're going to be driven. So I prefer the drive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Pavel Bo came into her, Yisraya Yehuda, in the Mishkab. Bevel uh, instructs us on our beds, our uh, mishkab, uh, instructs our carnal mind. Uh, we leave the damn thing on and it's running when you wake up, it's running. Uh, when you get up, it's running. Uh, it is a cancerous effect on us. Yeah. You can live without the damn computer. I will, man. You know something is wrong. It's not of you. Oh, I will get to the depth of this. What is shaping the minds today? Internet. I will. Television. Radios. It is not the Torah that's shaping our minds today. What is that person? What is the first thing we get home? We want to fight up. Hell, we're not thinking about breaking the book open. Hallelujah. Can't go around. Cannot go around. You can't go around the Torah. You cannot. Bevel Bo came to her bed, her mishkab, a beloved her dud. You know how you want to do out love of her love? And they have to me, they defile her. To me. I have taught on the uncleanliness of the to me. It is the idolatrous desire. And that is what Bevel does. It creates this idolatrous mindset, which is carnal. It is a mind that despises Yah. It is a mind that, that whereby the avenue of this enmity, this hatred for Yah, it is produced. The mind must be shaped. You shape your children's mind, do you not? Do you not shape them in the disciplines and the order that they walk? Do we not do that? If you don't do that, then you're not even a damn parent. We shape, we mold them, we craft their little minds, do we not? No, don't do that. It's all right to do that. Stop that. Oh, beautiful little Wanda. So does with God. He shapes our mind. He guides us by a law that was in him before it was a law. He is Torah. What he speaks is Torah. When he said, let there be life, that's Torah, that's a law. Can we defy the light? Can we, can we say we're not going to let it get daylight in the morning? Can we say we're going to stop the sun from going down and it's going to be, it's going to be daylight, we're just going to rejoice? You can try to emulate it with lights everywhere, but it's not the light. It's not the same. Causing us to go blind, our vision, our eyes can't see you. 
I read perfectly well outside. I don't need nothing uh, to magnify anything for me. We've tried to do all of that, but it's still not the light. They've tried to create every kind of religious whore out of Bethel, uh, but it's still not creating the mind or, or disciplining the mind that was in Yeshua HaMashiach. It doesn't allow that mind. So it doesn't allow you, our beds are kala, they're defiled, they're tormented, they're unclean. And so she went in, we have gone in, I'll show you what we have gone into now. I will show us what the Torah says. We have gone in, we have gone into her. We've allowed her to come into us. And we have tormented, we have by idolatry, we have defiled her. And this is what Bavel has done. She has defiled us. With her tasnuth horama, her fornication, her idolatry, her unclean activities. Isn't that what's all on this thing today? Isn't that even what the internet, it is a pornography a cesspool of every kind of wickedness. And people search and they look for what? What are you looking for? You're not looking for Yah. You must search the Torah. Search the Torah. And see if you have eternal life. And they are. We are the ones that testify of Yah. We must search the Torah. So instead of searching the Torah, we're searching the net. Instead of searching the Torah, I don't search no damn net. We're searching her nuts uh, and everything there is foul and unclean. Uh, she has come upon our beds. Uh, we lie in bed with laptops uh, trying to go on the net. Talk to me. Can't go to sleep. It keeps you awake, but yet you can't pray. We can't pray. I, I'm going to. Don't worry, I'll develop this message. You all just bear with me and just love me, all right? Oh, I will get to the root. Don't, don't worry. I got it. I got it. She has come into our bedrooms, uh, into our chambers. Uh, we have laid down with the slutty hoe. She has defiled us uh, with her tasnuth. Uh, and the word horam is a tasnuth. It is a, a sin of uncleanliness. Uh, it is idolatry. When Yisrael, when they went away from Yah, they went away from the principles of Yah, they began to incorporate the gods of the Assyrians uh, of Babel uh, into their construct uh, to worship Yah. And Yah will bring them down to the gates of hell. He said, it is your tasnus, her tasnus, her horns, her idolatry. And she was polluted. She was stormy. She was polluted with him. Uh, and her nephesh, listen now. We're talking about Yehuda. We're talking about Yisraya. Her nephesh, her life, her desire. It says it was Yaha. It was alienated. Does it say that in your book? It was alienated from them. See, even Babel doesn't give a damn about you. It is robbing, it is pillaging, it is destroying the minds of the people. And we think this world cares about us. It doesn't give a damn about you. I don't care who you are. The book of Shirak says, in this life, if a man has one friend, one, preventive, he has two. He has accomplished much in this life. Much. Well, in order for you, we can concur with that. So if I want a friend, I'm going to be friendly to my ach. I'm not going to do him wrong. I'm not going to abandon him. There's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. We're wounded in the house of a friend. Yah wounds us. He is our friend. Yah is our friend. He wounds us. He's a faithful, a friend is faithful. A friend loves at all time. Yah loves us even though we are back of wicked, vile things. He still cares for us, even to speak to us in this fashion, to open up the simple truth. And yet we have allowed Bavel to enter into our bed, our chambers. Bavel has polluted us. It has polluted our nephesh, our life. It doesn't, uh, it, it, it has no rejoicing in the Torah of Yah. And it calls us, uh, and we are alienated. We are Yahath. We have slowly killed ourselves and destroyed ourselves. Not only 
has Babel did that to us, but we have alienated ourselves from Yah. We are alienated. Well, I don't believe that. It's not saying that. I will show you that. Turn quickly to the book of Romeo, Romans. Hallelujah. I want to read this quickly here in the book of in the book of Colossia. And I'll go back to the book of Romans. The book of Colossia. Colossians. Hallelujah. Yah says here in the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verse 21. And you, are we the you? And you, that were sometime alienated. Does he use the same word? That we were alienated and enemies in our mind. We were alienated. She has alienated us. From Yah, upon our beds, our minds are not on Yah. It's not on the Torah of Yah. And we, you, that were sometime alienated, Yaqab, you were alienated, you had abandoned. Our minds abandoned Yah upon our beds. Our thoughts are not upon Yah on our beds. Because Pavel is confusing us. To create the entity, uh, the mindset to fight against Yah. And then Yah becomes our enemy. Yah becomes the one that we are opposed to. And we were sometimes alienated in our, and enemies in our minds. Uh, by what? By wicked works. Uh, the works of idolatry. Uh, the works of task uh, of every kind of unclean practice. Uh, the works of cheating and lying and every kind of vow thing uh, that is not of the nature of Yah. We have done, we have performed, uh, we have operated in those activities. Uh, and not only have, we are still operating in them. We're liars and corrupt. We're once alienated in our minds. And we are alienated in our minds against Yah. We're enemies. Alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works. Yet now, yet now, today, yet now has Yah, has He Ood, He is reconciling us today. All right, so He's going to teach us and show us. We're alienated. Our minds oppose Yah, we abandon Yah. And so the enemy, through the, through the subtlety of darkness, upon our mishkap, upon our beds, he calls the infusion of his construct to develop our minds. And the last thing you see on that thing is the thing you dream or think about during the course of the night. It is re-fortified in the sublimable. It is re-fortified in your conscience. It is strengthened in your conscience. It is strengthened in your being. That's what it is. So he... We have gone upon the bed of Bethel. We are laid upon the bed of Bethel. And it is the mind or it creates the construct. And the mind that is an enemy against almighty Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says here back in the book of Romans. Yeah. Book of the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 6. It's one thing that this mind is never subject to. You will know when you're dealing with a mind that is mishkab, a mind that is karna. We must understand that, Yisraya, a mishkab. That's why Ruban, he went upon his father's bed to defile it. And uh, we're not lying upon the beds of yonder sweet fragrance uh, of his throne room. Uh, then why will we defile with idolatry? Why will we bring the idols and, and erect them uh, in our minds and our hearts? Uh, and then we defy Yah. Well, what does the mind do? What, what is the first, uh, what is the fir first un uh, onslaught of that mindset? What is the first cancerous uh, metastasizing disease uh, that began to flow in that mind? Here it is right here in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 6. Uh, For the mishkab, the current mind, uh, is death. But to be spiritually minded... Uh, is life and shalom. Why? Because the carnal mind is abba. It is hostile. It is marked by the ill will. It hates. It is enmity against Yah. For it is not subject to the Torah of Yah. Neither in can, can indeed can be. The carnal mind is not subject to the Torah. 
It is a mind that is an enemy of Almighty Yah. It is a mind that hates Yah. It is a mind that is Abba. It is marked by its hostility against Torah, against the writings of Torah. It is not subject to the Torah. And neither indeed can be. And so this mindset, the construct of the mind today, uh, it has been created by a combination of things. Uh, of one's wicked desire, uh, by Bavel, the pursuit of Bavel, uh, and above all the friendship of the world and the love of the world, the passion of the world and the things of the world. Uh, it loves that above all things. Uh, that's why Yah brought his people out into, uh, in, 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 in the state uh, uh, there in Egypt uh, to Gosha that he could rid them of all of their defilement uh, and he brought them out after 400 plus years of hard labor and he gave them a Torah of his substance uh, and that's what you're sure is he is the substance uh, of the Torah of almighty Yah and our minds are shaping uh, and formed to hate Yah minds that are enemies against the Torah of Yah and that's why it's not subject that's why it says you don't have to that's why it says these things uh, are done away with not one word of Yah shall ever fill heaven and the earth the shema'am and the olam will dissolve before one little small fraction of yah's torah ever pass away nothing it is permanent because it is him it is everlasting when yah speaks something it is everlasting it is everlasting we made man he is an everlasting being he is an everlasting. When he put his breath in something, can the breath of Yah die? It can never die. That's why your shoe had to come in the form of a clay body. And that body was put to death. And when the Ruach, he went down into the gates of hell uh, with, the, with the power of the sword of the Ruach. The word of Yah, the Torah of Yah. He was an enemy against all that opposed Yah. And we must oppose everything that opposed the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. And when a mind is not subject unto the Torah, it is a mind that has laid upon the Mishkab, upon the beds of Bavel. It is a mind uh, that the construct, the order of that mind, it is one that of idolatrous pressures. Uh, and it worship the powers of hell. Uh, it takes delight uh, in the demonic uh, construct of this world. Can I go back to the definitive of the word enemy from the most notable Cambridge Dictionary? It says, uh, I'm sorry, from the, most, from, from the online etymology of the word, it says, adversary, foe, demon, and devil. That's what an enemy is. And that mind that's an enemy of the mind of Yah, it is a mind of a demonic power. I will prove it out, Yisraya. It is the construct of the mind of Hashatan. Because he said, I will exalt myself. I'm going to bring down, I'm going to overthrow Yah with a hostile intent. And our minds are hostile toward the Torah. We're hostile. We hate Torah. We hate the Muzah, the counsel, the instructions, the correction of Yah. We despise it. Oh, we as Yisraya. We have not, and we're not enemies in our minds against Yah. He said, at one time, we were enemies in our mind. I will show us what Shaul spoke from. I will show us the passage of the prophets that he spoke from. You don't find this by reading the Torah. You must dig like it's a treasure. You must labor to find it, Yisra'ya. I had a little time to labor in the Torah while you all were gone. Had no time to sit down in the book that my love delights in. Hallelujah. The corner of mine is death. So the Torah means nothing. Upon our Mishka, we don't think about Yah. And the enemy trains us constantly to abandon, to remove from far away from your mind. And so he has injected all kinds of Babylonian garments. Hallelujah. And we have hidden them under the tent of our heart. And because of that we bring, we bring despair upon Kol Yisra'ya. Upon the whole house Yisra'ya. 
We hide the insidious workings of our hearts uh, against our neighbors and our friends. Uh, and it caused us to respond in such a wicked way. You're not getting by. You're not getting by. You're not getting by at all, Yisrael. Hallelujah. So we see the Babylonian garment, garment is most beautiful. And we have brought it into the house of Yah. We have hidden it under our tent. And we hide things in our hearts. We hide things in our homes and we think we're getting by. But you're not getting by, Yisrael. You can hide it all day long, you're not getting by. We hide those things. We put them back when others are there. We don't want them to see there's something sadistic there. It's sadistic. It's wrong. It's vile. If it's right. You should not be ashamed. You have no fears at all. I don't have to jump and hide from you. Hallelujah. Come on in the house, man. If I come to your house, will you open up like that? Come on in. Yeah, hallelujah. 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 The carnal mind produces death. But the mind of the Ru'ach, the mind, we know that, did I not read that? We know that the Torah is spiritual. Did I not read that in Romeo 7, 14? For we know that the Torah is spiritual. Did I not read that? Yes. Hallelujah. So if he reads here, if he speaks here, and Romeo 8, 6, for, the car, for to be carnally minded, or mishkab, is death, and to be spiritually minded. Well, how do we become spiritually minded? You can only become spiritually minded one way. And through the writings of that which is spiritual. And we know that the Torah is spiritual. And if we don't delight in the Torah, we will not be spiritually minded. And if we delight in Bavel, we will have this, uh, this Ebab, this mind that has enmity, hatred, uh, and pure hatred uh, against the mind of Yah. And that's what she has done. She has come upon our mishkab, our beds. She's teaching us. She's in our homes. She's in our hearts. She's in our children. She's in the activities of our actions, what we do, Yisrael. And that ought not to be as a nation of people. That should not be. We cannot have a spiritual mind outside of the parameter of Torah. And these men, they're dogs out of the gates of hell. And Yah's going to kill every one of these illegitimate bastards. He's going to kill them all. They're dying, first of all, to be carnally minded is death, isn't it? There's no spiritual life in them. You don't see it. You see the damn folly, the laughter, the drunkenness. Everything the world does, they are doing it even much more zest and gusto. You don't see that in them, do you? When a man is spiritually minded, his mind is shaped by Torah and Torah discipline. He offers unto Yah the offerings continuously like Eob, peradventure that my sons and my daughters had barak, yeah, that they had spoken with a slightness against Yah. So he made the offerings for them. And even though in our conscience, uh, reservation of things or our knowledge of things, uh, then we offer costly unto you that which is appropriate, uh, at least if we have done that which, is, which has infringed upon Almighty God. And so the way of Bevel, we lay in Bevel upon the beds uh, of idolatry. We don't think about Yah because the thing that we idol, the thing uh, that has value to us, our minds are on that. The thing that is most important, uh, we think, we dream, we concentrate on that thing. But the things of Yah, they are not of any uh, value to us. Uh, so they, it carries no profit for us. We don't think on those things. And when we don't think on the things that are spiritually, uh, then we become carnal. And then there's no liveliness in us when we hear the name of Yah. We don't rejoice. When we see or hear the testimony of Yahshua, there is no excitement about it. But hell, when we hear about the Walmart sale or the dollar dime store, when we hear about all this got peanut butter on sale, hell, we make a beeline there. I will, man. You might as well talk to me, Israel. We go stock up on that. But when the messenger is dealing with the heart of Yisrael, be quiet. 
I want to hear that. Can you run that back again? We don't want to hear that. We want the salespeople. Though that's the nature of Yisra'ya because we're taken under this Babylon dominion, this power of hell. But because the carnal mind is a bad, it is hostile. It is marked by hostility. You've never been hostile towards the messenger of Yah because he said something that you didn't like. Have you not? Don't answer me. Because that is a mind that has laid upon the beds of demons. You have slept in the dungeons of darkness with demonic powers, with spirits of hell. The powers have bowed, they have gone in and copulated. Just like when the sons of Yah saw the daughters of Tizayon, the daughters of Yah that were beautiful, and they came into them, they bow, they entered into them, and they produced sons that are renowned, children that are renowned. The Nephilites are huge and monstrous people, and yet we allow that demon power to bow into us and the spirit of Babel, Babel, and we rise up in our own wickedness and our own descent and our own distaste for Yah. And we think we're strong and mighty and we're full of lies and full of dung and full of every kind of damn corruption there is. That's what it does, is make us stand up as though we have something. You don't have a damn thing. I was a young man, I wanted the preacher to preach in a way that I was scarred every way. When I got up from that place, I wanted to say, oh man, I appreciate you. I didn't want anything that was soothing to my conscience. I didn't want the things that I've done to be hidden. I wanted them to be exposed. Yeah. Don't tell me about the blessings of Yah. Tell me about the riches of Yah. Yeah. But he did not deal with me, he didn't preach to me. But a man stood before me. He didn't deal with me. It meant nothing to me. Well, I heard the blessings message, but that didn't, it didn't carry no weight with me. It really did not. I heard the things about his riches and all that, but that, you know, I was looking for something greater than that. Hallelujah. I was looking for something greater than that. One of the first things the Evangelist Hartsfield taught me, he said, Brother Robertson, if these are the blessings, the faggots got cars, the, yeah, the faggots, the faggot got million dollar homes, uh, you tell me that's the riches of Yah? That settles that in me, as far as I was concerned. He said, the fact has got that. How did that come? So I knew that the prosperity message was not for me. I knew that before I met him. But he solidified it in my bosom by the hearing of his mouth. It solidified that in me. And if he did not preach in a way that exposed me, you didn't say nothing. You didn't teach to me today. I was sad. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our minds were sometimes alienated from Yah. And yet by the power of Yahshua HaMashiach, his testimony today, he is now reconciling. He is Ud. He is bringing us back. He is saying to us again, get it right. According to the spiritual laws of the Torah. And I want to direct your attention to Mikah, the book of Mikah. The prophet, Micaiah. Hallelujah. I want to show you an example of this action of the mind. As this mind of the enemy, as we are as well, Yisrael. He prophesied during a time whereby the sins and the desolation of Yisrael were so great. And that the Torah of the, the Ba of Yah, it came unto Micaiah, the prophet. Who is like Yah? His name implies who is like Yah. Hallelujah. And he speaks to us here in Micah chapter 2 verse 1. I want to begin there. The Torah says, or woe. When Yah says woe, it is a startling thing that we must give attention. He says, woe to them. I want you to hear this. Again, we're dealing with this Mishkat. He said, woe unto them that devise iniquity, this ovon, that we hashab, we think out, we plan. That is what the hashab, we devise iniquity and work evil upon their mishkab, upon their bed. That devise evil upon their bed, that have an intercourse with idolatrous work. That their hearts are never set right with Yah. 
that it solidifies and strengthens them in their wickedness. Woe unto them that uh, work evil upon their bed. Uh, when morning and when the morning is light, when Yah shines his ore upon us, when the morning is light, uh, they practice or they aside, they accomplish uh, what the evil concepts are and the evil ideas are. They accomplish uh, or they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. He warns us about the things, uh, how the enemy and the powers or the mind that's an enemy of Yah, how it inject things in our mind and we practice that you see them do a dance a certain way and so you get up and practice that you see them do a certain thing and you get up and practice that you let your children watch that and they practice that you teach your children how to do it it is a foul thing you understand the concept is expelled upon your bed because we are most vulnerable at night time not the dark season, because there's a beauty about the dark season. It is the darkness that God begins all things. And the darkness he began today. And the dark corner of the earth, he brought forth a man. And the darkness of his skin, he brought forth every kind of mankind. I want to say this. And the most powerful genetics will tell you, every nationality of people, a skin complexion, can be taken off the earth. And there is only one people of skin complexion that has the DNA in them that will produce every color of people upon the earth. Every color of eyes, every color of hair texture, it will. It's not the dramatic tribes, it's not the Asian addicts, it is only one, it is the people of the dark hue of skin. You can get the whitest of white, the brownest of the yellows, you can get every complexion, every hair color, every eye color, only in that DNA. So it's from the darkness that all things began. It did not begin that we're like, there was darkness upon the earth and God said, let there be light. That's the only DNA of people. That's a fact. The greatest of the genetics have proven that to be no other people. And that's just a fact, Yisraya. You can't deny it. We can be stubborn and don't want to buy it and resist it, but that's foolish. It is so foolish. That's why this damn color barringer must be brought down. Because people rely upon the damn thing we call color. White is right, black is wrong, you get back. No, it's not so. It must be torn down. And these damn line dogs in these Christian whorehouses, they won't touch it. They got all these different type ethnicities there, but it's nothing but a damn cauldron of wickedness and sin. And it doesn't make a place right because they're what you call white people there. It doesn't make it right because they're what we call black people there. Hell, you go to the black houses, they're full of sin and every kind of damn wickedness. You go to the damn white house, they do every kind of vile, corrupt thing there is to do. So that's not the damn constitution uh, that signifies the strength of Yah. It is the people that's spiritual uh, and the power of Torah is evident in them. Damn their skin color. Can't go around. Hallelujah. Moving quickly. I want to finish up today. Moving, moving. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Again, the evil works upon their bed. Verse 2. He said, and the Hamad, and they covenant, they covet, and they covet. He says here that thou shalt not what covet? Huh? You should not covet. You should not commit adultery. Thou shalt not covet. You should not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shouldn't steal. Did he not say you should not covet? Huh? He said, this is a generation that covet, he says, uh, and they covet the Hamad, the field and take them by violence. They rob and steal from everyone. This is a nation that robs. It steals from everyone. It robs. It steals. It has created wealth because of the free labor and the inexpensive labor. It is a nation of wealth, this nation, and it has done it violently by gazelle. It has robbed the people by force and houses, and it take them away just like it did of the people of the Darsbus. It took them away, so, so they oppress a valiant. They oppress a mighty warrior of Yah. The Geba, they oppress him and his house even the man and his heritage. Yah says, therefore this says Yah, 
Because against this family do I devise uh, Hashab. I'm going to invent an evil against them. From which you shall not remove your necks. Neither shall you go heartedly. Uh, for the time is evil. Yah says in that day shall one take up a parable against you. Uh, and shall lament with uh, a people. How has Yah removed it from me. Turn away from us. He has devised, divided our fields. Micah 2 5. Therefore, you shall have no one in the kakal or the congregation of Yah to divide the land by lots. This is what has happened among us. Because we are oppressed, we have come under the reign. Of a system and a mind that is against Yah. There is no Sadiq among the people of Yah. That was the purpose of the king. And Yah was our king. He gave us Yisra'ya a land to flourish and live. And so that's why he installed kings. Even like Dawid. That they were the ones that over see the land and to make sure that every Israelite had a plot, had land, uh, that we were in his place uh, to bring forth the beauty, beauty of worship unto him. Uh, and what has happened because of our sins, uh, he has dispersed us into the four corners of the earth. Uh, we have developed the mind of Bethel. Uh, we have become an enemy of Yah. We are an enemy against the Torah. We hate the Torah. We despise the Shabbat. They tell you, you can't work on the Shabbat. It's a damn lie. You don't work on the Shabbat. You do nothing on the Shabbat. You don't involve in no kind of activities on the Shabbat. You don't do that, Yisra'ya. You don't cook. You don't labor. You do nothing. You rush in the Torah, the comfort, and the confidence of Torah. It's wrong. You're sitting. And you know that it's right to do what you do. It's a sin. I don't give a damn what it is. You don't do it. He tells us the Zakah Shabbat, and he wants us to Shema keep it Kadosh, set apart. Yeah. This damn whore tells you to keep Sunday. And yet Yah says, "Remember Hashabbat." And this Babylon spirit, this Babylonian calendar, and the and their holidays tell you to, to remember Sunday. But Yah says, "You remember Hashabbat, and set it apart as Kadosh." They've created the minds to be enemies of Yah. And you tell people about the Shabbat, they get mad as hell. They get mad as a damn werewolf. They get mad as a demon because they're enemies of Yah. And the demon rises away. Well, I, I don't see why. Every day is the same. No, it's a damn lie. Yeah. He named that one the Shabbat. It was his Shabbaton. He rusted. He doesn't need rust, but he rusted to enjoy the beauty of his creation. You don't have to do that, you're damn lie. Then if I don't have to, are all these are written on the same tablet? These are written on this tablet? Are they not the foundations of Yah's truth? Are they not? Well, if I don't remember the Shabbat and keep it called Asha, then I can commit adultery. Then I can murder. Can I not? These are the pillars of His truth. And that is just as invite. You know, you look at that and say, oh, I don't do that, I don't do that. But hell, you break all this. You're guilty. That's right. You're guilty of all of them. If you despise one, you're guilty of all of them. You don't even know you're sinning. For we know the sin is a transgression of the Torah because the mind is a mind of an enemy. You're trying to bring down the Torah. You're trying to bring down the mitzvah. That's why we justify every kind of wicked works. Whether it's in us, in your children, your husband, your wife, you justify their damn wickedness. And it's wrong. It's wrong. Parents justify the wickedness in their children, their grandchildren, their sons and their daughters, their mothers, their cousins, their aunts. It's wrong. You don't justify the damn wickedness. You do what is just, what the Torah says. I don't give a damn if it's daddy or mama. I don't care who it is. You do what is so deep before you. I don't give his grandchildren, granddaughter, grandmother. It makes no difference, Israel. Yeah. I don't care if they're dead, not the dead, bury the dead. You don't participate in activities on the Shabbat to, to profane the Shabbat of Yah. Let the damn dead bury the dead. I don't care if it's mom or dad, let them bury the dead. It's wrong. It's wrong to dishonor what Yah commands. But because we've laid in bed with idolatry, we've gone to the idolatrous whole houses and they have sown the seed. 
They have sown the seed in us. It's hard to get that out. Uh, the soul of the top soul went forth to sow seed. Uh, Yah has sown his seed, his Torah among Israel. And then the enemy, the enemy is who he is, isn't he? Uh, then he sowed seed as well. The tear. And the tear tears us away from Torah. Tears our mind away from Torah. Calls us to hate Torah. Cause us to despise Torah. We get angry at Torah. We get angry at the words of Yah. We get angry when Yah speaks to us. Uh, you go out to this Christian idolatrous house uh, and begin to speak Torah and see how angry they get. You tell them about the Shabbat and see how angry they get. You tell them that he has a name. If you have a name, what is his name? And see how angry they get. Uh, everything has a name. Uh, even plants have name. Uh, and if they don't have name, you get it. You name the plant. Uh, this is the hibiscus. Huh? Names you can't even hardly pronounce, can you? I got one of them biscuits. What is that? A hibiscus. Give me the name of some of those plants, my Eva. Come on, give me some. What is that? Seniors, come on. Come on, y'all. Give me some name of those plants. Chrysanthemums? Irish? Huh? Vacas. How in the world you remember all that? And there are folks going there, y'all, they show, oh, that's a hibiscus, there's a vagus, there's a cassanthorus, and, and, and there's a this. And yet the name of the one that made that, they don't even know that. Something is sick in your damn mind. Something is sick in your mind. Something is twisted in your logics. It's not of y'all, Yisra, y'all. Enemies, alienated. When you're alienated from y'all, when there's no enthusiasm about y'all, in your walk, your talk, you know you're alienated. You know you are alienated. You are an alien unto Yah. You know that there's a work of hell in your mind. There, there's, an assault, there's an assault that is planted in your mind to assault Yah, to attack him, uh, to come against Yahshua. And you're bidding your time, you're bidding the appropriate time uh, to come against him, to do your damn dirty work, uh, to do your damn evilness, uh, and to practice your damn corruption uh, that your mind ponder on on your bed uh, and your activities. There's something there, Yisrael, Yah. It's wrong. It's wrong. And that's why, yeah, he's trying to reconcile us as a nation, as a people, to bring us back to his bosom. Where do I stop? Hallelujah. Yah says to the prophet here in verse 5 of Micaiah chapter 2, Therefore you shall have no one in the congregation of Yah to devour the land by lots. Why? Because this is our evil practice here in verse 6. I want to begin. He said, prophesy. He said, I want you to not talk. I want you to preach, declare. He says, I want you to prophesy you not. Don't say this. Say they to them that prophesy. They shall not prophesy to them so that the shame shall not overtake them. O oh, you that are named Bayad, Yaakob, is the Ruach of Yah, is it, kasa, is it limited? Is the Ruach of Yah limited? Is there a restraint upon the Ruach of Yah? Is the Ruach of Yah, is it uh, limited? Uh, is it easily vexed? Is it grieved? Uh, no, Yisra'ya. Are these his doing? What we are doing, is it the doing of Yah? The way we think, is it the mind of Yahshua? I want to show you some wicked practices, Yisra'ya. He said, do not, my Dibarim, do talk to him uh, that walk uh, your shot. That's the Torah of Yah. Do right by us. Does it prosper us if we walk Yasha? If we walk straight, straightforwardly before Yah? Does it prosper us? It's only when we try to hide our wickedness, our corruption. Again, he says, Do not ma dibarim my word, do tav. Does it not perform tav to him that walk Yasha upright? Yah says, even of late is more, even as late as yesterday. That's what Ethmol is yesterday, today, this time, or the time path. He said, even of late, even of late, my people. Does it say that in your translation, my people? Does it say my people? Yah says, my people is kum, they have risen up. And the word kum, in the hostile sense. Have our love ever rose up or risen up against Yah? We hear the Torah of Yah preach, do we rise up against that? Do we get angry at Omar? Yeah, that's the mind of the enemy of Torah. 
He said, even of late my people, as yesterday our minds rose up. Uh, today our minds rise up. Uh, the day before yesterday it rose up. Uh, he said, even of Ethmul. Uh, that's why he used the word Ethmul to let us know. Even of this time, yesterday, today, even of the time that has passed, uh, our minds have risen up. He said, my people, they have rose up uh, as an enemy. We are not an enemy and oh yea, but yeah, are we? He said, my people, they have rose up as an enemy. My people have rose up as an enemy. My people have rose up as an oye. Shaul says, and you that were sometime alienated in your mind by wicked works, now has he reconciled us to him. That's why he spoke what he spoke on the, to the gathering in Colossae. My people, he says, he said, you have come, you have risen up as an enemy. You have pulled off the robe with the garment from them that pass by securely as men, averse from war. We have taken and stripped the nobi. And those that come to us in meek and the clothing of the covering of Yah in Yahshua. We have stripped them. We have made them naked. We have made them afraid to prophesy the truth or to Nabal to tell us of the impending destruction of Yah. We have made them naked and those that will secure their walk. Because we have risen up as an enemy against Yah. Oh, daughter, you don't have to do that. Don't forget what she said. Don't, don't care about what he said. It's a wickedness there. <laughs> he said that. I don't give a damn. We have risen up as enemies. It's wrong. We're guilty of it. I'm not here trying to correct the world. He's trying to show his people. We have risen up as enemies. We have done the things of an enemy toward Yah. And we allow Babel to strengthen our hearts. We're strengthened in our idolatrous practices and the, and the things that we do. Yisraya, hallelujah. Yeah. He said, the woman of my people, you have cast out from their pleasant house the beauty of Yah's uh, caring compassion for his house. That's what the Israel does. She cares. She nourishes the child with the breast milk. Does she not... Uh, you don't even feed the people with the simple truths of Almighty Yah. And their children, you have taken away beauty from. And that's what these dogs today have done. They have taken away the beauty of a woman. She is serenaded as a damn slut today. She is serenaded as a Jezebel. She dressed like a $2 whore on the street. The men dressed like the skinny, tight, faggot boys. And that is the truth. The bird is on the lust of their slacks are dropping down off their buttocks. The women are naked like beasts today. They're dressed like two dollar whores, Yisraeah. That's not of Yah. They've taken away the beauty of the bath of Tizayon. A true messenger will cover the bath of Tizayon and show her her tifra. Rise and depart. For this is not your rest. This is not our place to rest, Bavel. Bavel is not our rest. It is not the place of our shalom. We are, we are, we are a people that are sojourning in a land. It's not our place of rest. Because it is polluted. This land is polluted. It has polluted our minds. We have become torme. We are idolatrous. We worship every kind of damn unclean thing it is. I don't care whether it's a $2 Walmart stamp or a dollar smart store. We get excited about that, Yisraya. That's wrong. We get excited about a pecan pie, a sweet potato custard. We don't get excited about Yah. We get excited about eating. We get excited about doing nothing. When it comes to Yah, we don't get excited. All of that passes out of the draw. And it has no value. But this has eternal value for us, Israel. He said, because it is polluted, it shall destroy you. And Babel is destroying us, uh, even with a sore destruction. He warns us here in verse 11. If a man 
Walk in the spirit of shekha, of lie, falsehood, does lie, saying, I will prophesy to you wine of strong drink. He shall even be the prophet to this people. If one comes in and tells you you don't have to worry about the Torah, that you're blessed of Yah, that you have the riches of Yah, Yah said you shall be the prophet, that one shall be the prophet of this people because they have become my enemy. That is the people who this man will be the prophet unto. He will be a pseudo unto them because of their wickedness, their uncleanliness. They don't want to hear the message of the Nobi. But this man will come and say to them, I will prophesy smooth things and nice things. He will not, he will not talk about the sins and the egregious activities of Yisraya that create this mind of an enemy against Yah. That when they hear the salutation, let it be said, you don't have to keep the Torah anymore. He rejoices. Let it be said you can work on the Shabbat. Uh, he gets happy. Let it be said you can do what you want to on the Shabbat. Uh, he gets excited. Let it be said you can do what you want to. He gets happy. It's alright you can wear what you want to woman. You can wear your pants. You can dress like a whore. You can dress like a faggot man. They get excited. That's not Yah. So these are the men Yah say let that prophet be the prophet to that people. He's going to send us a true prophet. He's going to tear down the rip out. He's going to set everything in order. That's what a true nobody does. You're not going to tell him prophesy unto me smooth things. And those that are in that nature, he said, send them one that will prophesy unto them smooth things. Why? Because they're my enemy. And that's what the world is speaking, isn't it? Things are going to get better. No, it's not going to get better. I was reading the other day. I said to Oxymion, we were talking. I said, you know... I was reading the other day that 60% of the employers today said that's beginning next year, that their employees, they're going to have to take and, uh, and cover the cost of their own medical insurance because they're spending too much money. They're greedy dogs. And mama running the baby, the baby get a little stretchy, running him to the emergency room. The baby sniffled, they're running them to the emergency room. They said, hell no, no more. We have seen our premium go from $1.2 million to $2.6 million. We're not paying it anymore. We're losing money, our stockholders. Uh, I can't make the money I'm making. The mid-level managers, no, we're going to stop that. Uh, 60%, that's why a company like Walmart will never. They have very few full-time employees. They hire them part-time. These stores here, very few are full-time. The, the mid-level managers and those, are the, only those. Uh, but they, they're not full-time because they're not paying for your baby getting sick. They're not sending your baby to the doctor. They're sick of it. You understand? That's what they are, are doing. Uh, and not only that, but the demand uh, of the naturals of the earth, the demand of gas. They said 2012, you're going to see a dramatic change in your lifestyle. Oh, we're not going to buy that. Oh, things are going to get better. Mr. Barack Hussein Obama is nothing but a puppet. He was raised up by the powers to be to reflect the very attention upon those that run the world and what they have done. That they have put it right on this little nicklet here. That's what it's going to be. He's going to get elected again. He's going to get elected again. We're going to see the crush of this damnation. It's going down. It's already down. It's already down. It's already down. It's already down. We're going to see the final blow. Just like they are in Greece, whereby they, uh, they, were, they, they mortgage off the people. They're mortgaging you off too. They already mortgaged your children off. They already got that little child earmarked for a job that she's going to have to pay back the debt of the rich and the powerful. You come out of this damn slut, Yisraya. You don't sell your babies to that. You create something for your children and leave them a heritage if we shall pass uh, from this life. Uh, that they're not bound uh, to the slavery of this world. Uh, that their minds are not uh, in the captivity of the powers uh, of this world. It's a damn shame upon us uh, as a people and a nation. And because we're so damn selfish, we will never do it. Why? Because we love land with idolatry upon the bed of idolatry. My people are enemies. They have become, my people have become the enemies of those that stand with the sword. My people have become an enemy uh, of my speech. My people have become an enemy of my prophecy. And Yah says, send a prophet that will prophesy. You're going to have much yayin. Yayin represents the wine, the healing, the balm. You're going to have much yayin. You're going to have much wine and you're going to have prosperity. Yah said, let that be the prophet of this people here. 
Let that be the prophet of this people because we don't want to hear what Yah says. Uh, because our minds are developed by the spirit uh, that is adamantly against Almighty Yah. It's against Yah Yisra. Yah, that's why he said, come out of her, my people. Come out. Touch not the unclean things of the world. We don't touch those things. What the world does, what is highly esteemed upon the world is an abomination to Yah. You don't do what the world does. You don't dress like them. You don't act like them. You do things differently. You don't do the things that the world does. Don't even let your walk be like the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Moving right along. Hallelujah. In the book of Ma'aseth, Shulishim, the book of Acts, the book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 10. This mind that's an enemy of Yah, it is full of the substance of Hashatan. Was not the serpent Mosarhal than every beast in the garden? Here is a pattern here in the book of Acts, chapter 13. Sha'u speaks profoundly when he speaks to Elmas, the sorcerer, verse 10. And he says unto him, O fool of not some, but all akhba, uh, subtility. You insidiously, wickedly, you're an enemy of Yah. He says, you're a man full of akba and all chava mischief. He said, you child of Hashatan, you are the enemy of all sadiq, of all truth. Is that not what he says? Can I tell you what truth is? I want to read this. You that are listening, I will show you what truth is, Yisraya. Did he not say you're the enemy of all truth? He said, you're the enemy of all truth. And these men saying that the Torah, you don't have to keep the more of them. The Torah is not valid today. I want to show you what all truth is. This is what all truth is. Hallelujah. It says here in the book of Tehillim, in the book of Psalms, 142 and 119, 142. It says, your sadiq, your righteousness... It says your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness uh, and your law, your Torah is the truth. Uh, that is the truth, Yisraya. It is the Torah of Almighty Yah that is the truth. Uh, he says in verse 151, Thou art near, O Yah, and all of thy commandments. Are these the commandments of Yah? Are these the mitzvah of Yah? I read out of this rendition. Uh, he said all of your commandments are truth. All of your commandments are truth. Uh, is this not truth? Uh, did he not say to the sorcerers of hell, uh, this mind against Yah, he said, you're full of all mischief. Uh, and he said, you're the enemy of all truth. Uh, did he not say that? Is not that mind the enemy of all truth? When the mind rejects the sub Shabbat, it is the mind of the enemy. It's the enemy of all truth. Is not the commandments truth? Did not I just read that, that his commandments are truth? He said, you're the enemy of all sadiq, which is truth. It is that his Torah is truth. He said, you will not cease to shalaf or to twist, to pervert. You will try to overturn the right way of Yah. That is what the Torah was called, the right way or the way. That is what the Torah in the old days were called the way, the derech, the path. And that's what this convoluted, twisted mind does. It tries to shalah, try to overthrow. It tries to twist. It tries to say, you don't have to do that. That's a damn lie. That's a damn lie. And when one says the Torah is done away with the helium 119, 142, and 151, it tells us what is truth. You cannot have truth without the mitzvah of Yah. His mitzvah are truth. Is not his name a part of the mitzvah? Is not creating gods and bowing down to gods that's in the mitzvah? Is not the Shabbat in his, the mitzvah? Come on, Yisraya. The mind that's an enemy against Yah. And from birth, our minds have been trained that way. From our Baptist whole house, from our Pentecostal whole house, from our evangelical whole house. From our Lutheran, from our Catholic whole house, our minds were trained to pervert, to show laugh, to twist, to distort. And that's what these damn devils of hell are doing today. They're twisting. 
They're twisting. They're twisting. They're twisting the Torah of Yah. Because their lives are twisted. They live like damn dogs. They live like damn dogs. They can say what they want to. Hallelujah. And they want men that prophesy smooth things to them. Tell me nice things. Talk about the tabernacle. The furnishing. Talk about the new world order. Damn the new world order. I'm in the order of Yah. Damn the club of Rome. Damn the Illuminati's. If they were so secretive and so private, then how do you know so damn much? You stupid jackass. You're not even a dumb jackass. He caused a dumb jackass to his eyes to be open. And to declare unto the prophet, Yah, open his eyes that he may see. Pata, open his mind that he may understand. It is his mitzvah that is truth. Yisra'ya, it has nothing to do with what I say, it's what he says, Yisra'ya. And that mind is always full of subtleties. Ak, ok, akba. Just like the Muslims say, akba. It's full of subtlety. And the serpent was the most subtle creature in all the garden. Was that a mind? Was that mind? Uh, did he create a mind in Havad that was an enemy against Yah? Did he not produce the mind of the enemy of Yah from that seed? Uh, that's what the wicked one is always doing, trying to sow seeds, Yisrael, yeah? How? By words. By speech. Anytime you find a man grinning and laughing all the time, you know something. He calls himself teaching you. You know something is twisted in that damn fool. Oh. No seriousness about that jackass. Uh. If a man love to laugh and play all the time, something is twisted in that man. And give a damn who he is. I don't play. Hallelujah. I don't play with men. I definitely don't play with women. Hallelujah. This mindset is one that is full of akhba. It is an insidious mind of craftiness. It's always trying to craft things, but not according to Torah, but according to their own mandate. Twisting the ways of Yah to fit them. That's the mind of the enemy of Yah. That mind has not been, has not been developed by some natural construct. It is a spiritual construct. It is by demonic powers. It's full of all mischief. All of Hava. It's a mind of ruins. You're a child of Hashatan. You're an Ogeb, an enemy of all Sadiq. All of his commandments, he said, are Sadiq. All of the commandments of Yah Sadiq. They're enemies of the commandments. They're enemies of the mind of Yah. You will not cease to show laugh or to pervert the right way of Almighty Yah. That's all they're trying to do, cease. They go out from among the house of Yisra'ya and they're always trying to pervert. That's all they do, Yisra'ya. It's not of Yah. It's not of Yah. It creates this mind of idolatry and you began to give more self-pronounce he to what you think and what you say and you have disdain for what the Torah says all of his commandments they are truth it's either that we lied or the one that prophesied by the false lies he lied this is a mind that has shot on he is working he is creating for the great day of the battle now when the messengers of Yah, I will get back to that, when they rise up and they began to speak, we will say, to hell with them. Kill him. Who do you want, Barabbas or Yoshua? Give us Barabbas. Kill that bastard. He speaks thing that we don't like. He's telling us that there should be no wine and no fresh grapes on the vine. Kill the dirty bastard. Give us Hashotan. Give us those messengers of Baal. Give us those that confuse us. This nation and the world walks in a perpetual state of confusing. And they got leaders that confuse them continuously. They're not straightforward. They're not Yeshua. They're not straight. We have learned not to be straight with ourselves. And we cannot be straight with each other. We don't know how to be straight with each other. I have never seen such immature men in all my life. And I'm not the most mature man. Not me. But I've seen a plethora of immature men so weak. 
That's why I can see that a man is going to be more precious than the finest of gold. Where do you find a man? Because one man can cover the house of Israel. You're sure did. We need a man in the midst of us. Hallelujah. That's the truth. It's a mind that's full of subtlety. Akhba. It's a mind that's full of mischievous ways. Chava. It's a mind of ruin. Hallelujah. The strength that creates this mind, I want to show us here in the book of Yaakov. What is the power that caused this mind to rise up? And the great strength and the magnitude that it rises up in. Hallelujah. The book of Yaakov. The strength of this mind who creates it. Yaakov chapter 4, James 4 and verse 4. I read this to us or I pronounced this in the beginning. Yaakov says, you adulteress, you adulteress and adulteress. Know ye not, know you not, yada, that the friendship of the world is eba. Don't you know that the friendship of the world is marked by the spirit of an enemy? The friendship of the world is enmity with Yah. Don't you understand that? He said, wherefore, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of Yah. I can't say that any clearer. That's just it. Whosoever is intimate with the world and they, they have this intimate relationship with those that are of the world. They feel this comfort and this, this resolve with them. And yet among Yisraya, they feel none. Yah said, that's my enemy. Because the world doesn't love Yah. The world hates you. I don't care if it's your damn family reunion, your chicken day, your hog day. It makes no difference at all. I don't care. Whosoever is the friend of the world is an enemy of Yah. This is how this mind is, it is strengthened by the world. It strengthens us. It causes us to rebel and to, uh, and to resist Yah constantly and continuously, doesn't it? It caused us to abandon the ways of Yah because we love the folly and the laughter and the foolishness of the world because we want to present an image. We don't want to present the image of Yahshua HaMashiach. Damn the image of the world. I'm not trying to present an image of a strong man, a man that is wealthy, a man that is intelligent. I want to present the image of the Siddiq of Yah. I want to walk in a place and they say there's something strange about that man. He is not like the other man. Not because uh, they think I have money. I don't give a damn. If I got on dirty jeans and my work boots, uh, it is still the same, Yisrael. It's not because you got on a thousand dollar suit uh, and fifteen hundred dollar shoes. Uh, that doesn't mean a damn thing. I don't care whether I got on a pair of work boots uh, and a baseball cap on and a dirty shirt. Uh, when I walk in a place, uh, I want to, to, to know that there's a difference. I don't care where I walk. And I walk in places like that and I know. I know that's a fact. I know they watch. I know they, I don't care. Not because I have money, because I'm broke. Because I have the truth of Yahshua HaMashiach, the witness of that testimony. I'm not trying to be like the world. I'm not trying to present anything that uh, I'm this kosher kind of a man. I don't want to present that. I don't want to present that I'm a strong, mighty man. No, I don't want to present that. I want to present that I'm a man of truth. And I don't have to speak that with the volume of words. I speak about the volume of, of the power of that testimony in me. The light. You may not understand, but he is not like the rest of them. This is a generation that is full of the adulterous, this Tasnuth. This is a generation of idolatry. It creates in our minds to withstand Yah. So it teaches everyone today, you need no one to teach you. That's a damn lie. You can't even have imuna unless it's nurtured. You must be taught. You must be taught. Yisrael, when they were not taught, what happened? They went to every kind of wicked work, didn't they? Did they not? And that's what we're doing, aren't we not? We're doing the things that we that we perceive in our conscience. We perceive it right. We look at the world and we want to. I don't want to be like the world. I don't want to dress like the world. I don't want to act like the world. I want to act totally different. I don't want to look like the men of the world. I don't want to look like that. I don't want to look like them. I don't want to be bling bling and, and dressed out like the world. I don't want the diamond rings and diamond watches. I don't want that, Yisrael. Yeah. Not me. I want the riches of Yah, his Isha. I want that. I want my statement that what is made in me is the statement uh, 
that Yah is real. That's what I want, Yisra'ya. And that's what we should desire with great fervor as a nation of people. We cannot allow this Bevel spirit to create this animosity against Yah. We get mad at Yah about the smallest of things when He tells us how wicked we are, when He shows us the liars we are and the, how corrupt our nature. We get angry at Yah. We get mad at the messenger. And when someone comes and stand before you and talk about love and all to be kind and all the little sweet things, we oh, I, I need to have more love. No, you need the damn sin. You need to get the damn wickedness out. You need to get the damn seed out. You need to get down into your bosom and get the damn sin out. And the ones that talk on love and all that, they don't even have any damn love. They don't even know what love is. They're shallow. They have no love. They don't know how to treat their wives, their children. They don't know how to interact with Yisrael. They don't even have love. 99.9% of the men that talk like that have no love. Same thing with women. They have no love. There's only one love. You will know the strength of a man's love. If any man says he loves Yah, keeps not his mitzvah, he's a damn liar. How do these that say you don't keep the Torah, how do you get past that? They are corrupt children of hell. Hallelujah. They're children of Hashatan, just like he said to Elmas, you're a child of the devil. You're seed of the enemy because you're full of solity and you're full of mischief. You're corrupt, wicked ways. You're always trying to pervert the right way. That's what our minds are. are always striving to try to pervert the ways of Yah. That shouldn't be, Yisra'ya. Yeah. You don't pervert what is right. Even if you get upset, you don't pervert it. You don't speak against what is right. I don't care if you get upset with the individual or what is said. You don't, you don't do that, Yisra'ya. You don't try to speak against that. You leave it alone. And if he is wrong, Yah, she is wrong, Yah will manifest We've learned to do that and it's wrong, Yisra'ya. It's not right. It's not right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to move here quickly because I want to close. When I go on live on Shabbat evening, I tell you it wears me out. It does. I'm wore out. And when I don't do it, I have more strength for the Shabbat. I'm going to have to get my zakane and you act geared up for that too. You're going to handle that for me, all right. Hallelujah. I want to move quickly. Let me move here. Hallelujah. This is the prophecy in the book of Yeskel, in the book of Ezekiah. Hallelujah. In the book of Ezekiah, chapter 35, verse 1. And he gives us a demonstration of the mind that Yah hates. We know that the carnal mind is enmity with Yah. It is mutual hate. And he shows us the mind here in Yeskel, what he hates. It is the prophecy against Edom... Ezekiel 35 verse 1. It says, Moreover the word of Yah came unto me, it entered into me, it hayel, when you see that word came, and moreover the word of Yah, he says that thou by the hayel, the word of Yah came to me saying, this is what it spoke, the amir of Yah, it uttered unto me. He says, Ben Aram, he said, I want you to set your face against Mount or Heer, which is Edom. It implies Harry was not uh, Esau, Harry, the Edomites. He says, set your mouth against the Edomites. Now, I will show you the spirit of the Edomite. This is the Edomite. has nothing uh, they can try to hide under the complexion of uh, skin color, but you can't hide. This is the nature of the Edomite. He says, set your mouth uh, against, Ed uh, against Edom. Uh, he said, I want you to know more against, against it. And say to it, this says the sovereign Yah. Behold, O Mount Say, uh, Yah says, I am against you. I am not for you. He is saying to Edom, Esau, the Edomites, he still hate Esau. He say, I am against you. Yah says, I will scratch out my hand against you. I will make you the most shimamba, or the most desolate, the most waste, the most annihilated place people on the earth. Yah says, I will fill your city's ways, and, I, and you shall be desolate, and you shall know that I am Yahweh. Why? Yah says, because the Edomites now, the spirit of Edom, verse 5, hear this, Yisra'ya. He said, because you have had a perpetual hatred 
a perpetual eva, an enmity. When something is perpetual, it is without ceasing. He said, you have had a perpetual hatred, a hostility. You've had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Yisra'ya. My Zira, you have shed their blood. You have killed them. You try to destroy them. There's a hatred in you. Yah says, and you have done it by force of the sword. In the time of their calamity, their aid, their distress. He said, in the time of their iniquity, had an end. Y'all said, that's an end. Listen, Yisra'ya, there's an end for all of our calamities. It's coming to an end. It is known as the tribulations of Yah. The, Zah, the great tribulation. Gadol, Zah, Zah, Gadol. That all of that shall end. And Yah said, even in the midst of tribulations, uh, He said, even at the time of the ceasing uh, of my refining Yisra'ya, you have had an enmity against Yisra'ya because uh, you have a mindset against Yah. And when you find those that have this mindset against true messengers uh, and those that love Yah, it's because uh, that is the spirit of the Edomites. Uh, it is the spirit of the Edomites. They despise, they, they speak against, they have no knowledge. They don't speak out of the plethora of knowledge. They speak out of the mind of, uh, of this hatred against Yah. That's how they speak. And we find ourselves doing that. It's wrong, Yisra'ya. It's not of Almighty Yah. He goes on to say, in verse 6, Yah says, therefore, as I live, says the sovereign about Yah, Yah says, I will prepare you. Now, this is what he says. I will prepare you for blood, for death, for the blood, for the battle. And blood shall pursue you because of your sin. Since you have not hated blood or the dumb, the sin, your actions. Even your own sins uh, shall pursue you in the midst of that battle. It is one thing that is sure that this spirit that we as Yisra'ya, we have the spirit of the Edomites in us. That's why we hate Yah. And until the power of your sure, the witness of that comes into our bosom, uh, it will always abide. And once the power of that revelation come, uh, then the strength of the spirit of the Edomites, uh, it shall be dissolved. We are not oppressed in Babel. Uh, we are not taken by the surmising of that mind uh, that is the dance Yah. It will not pervert us. We will not go astray. We will not. And the mind of Edom must be totally eradicated out of Yisra'ya. And the only way it's going to be done, can I tell you how? By tribulations. That's the only way, Yisra'ya, and I'm glad. I hope that Yah grants me the time to be around. If I'm not, some of you will. Hallelujah. He said, I will make Mount Seher most Shemana. Desolate is going to be waste. He said, I, and I will cut off from it the one that leaves and the one that returns. And I will fill his mountain with his slain men in your hill and in your valleys and in your rivers. Shall they fall that are slain with the sword? And Yah says in verse 9, and I will make you shimma, I will make you desolate. For how long? Forever. Forever. I will make you desolate. The mind of Esau or the Edomites, it is a desolate mind. It is a destructive mind. It is a mind of ruin. It is a mind that destroys. It is a mind of lies, of shekha, and every kind of evil work. He said, I will make you devastated. Desolate forever. And your city shall not return. And you shall know that I am all Maria. We are a city, are we not? We have the light of the testimony of Yeshua Hamashiach. We shall set upon the Mount Tizayon as a city upon the hill. And our light of the testimony of Yeshua shall be visible. And the only power of our testimony, it must be in our labor, in our mind. You can look at individuals, you kind of tell the strength of their knowledge of a matter just by in their foreheads, just by the conversation. And this must be in our leba, Yisra'ya. It must be in the depth of our heart. We cannot be an enemy of Yah. And you despise the mitzvah, the Torah of Yah, you're an enemy of Yah. That's a matter of full subtlety and mischief. 
Did not Hashatan despise the Torah? Did he not say the Hava, the day that you defy Yah, Yah knows, Yada, you will become gods? Know what is right and wrong. Are we not choosing what is right and wrong? The Torah tells us what's right. It tells us what's wrong. And we are saying what is right is right. We can work on the Shabbat. Lies the Torah says is wrong. We love to keep the feast days. He said, this shall be a covenant among Israel. He said, throughout your, your door, your generation, Olam Viat, forever and ever. He said, for you to teach your children, children that they teach your children. Come on. You know, I disputed the writing of Obadiah. A lot of people go to what they call Yisraelite heritage for Obadiah Yisrael. And I disputed, I wrote a dissent on his article that you and we should not keep the feast days. And the cowardly man, I hope someone gives him this and let him know I call him a coward. I've written to the man three times, he will not respond. That's a coward to me. Well, there are those that call you, well, Obadiah has not done me any wrong. But these bastards out of hell that have come against me and spoken and lies and promote lies and they, they have no conscience of their lies. I will not deal with those men. I'm not dealing with them. When you lie against a man, your conscience is so seared you can lie. Something is sick in you. Even when I was a wicked man, it was just not my propensity to lie. I didn't like lying because I don't like people to lie to me. I've never been one that's given over to lies and just lied to be lying. And for someone to speak an ill against one that you call an ark and you lie without proof and your conscience is not troubled, something is wrong with you. I don't want to sit down and break bread with that man. No. If any man that fellowship with one that calls himself a brother that's a fornicator, an extortioner, Come on, we should not even sit down with one like that. I'm not going to sit down with one like that. When I have a sense that the one's heart is right, I can tell. That's all right. I, I see you. I'm not going to embrace you, but I'll talk with you. But no, I'm not going to embrace you. I'm not going to lay hands suddenly on these pigs out of hell. No, I'm not, Yisraya. I am not. He said, I'm going to bring you down. And that mind is going to be brought down to the side of the pit. It is a mind that operates to strengthen the birth of Babel, it keeps the seed alive. We see the weeds in the field, they spring forth abundantly. And the more you hoe and the more you chop the weeds, the ones that come back, they come back stronger. That's why today's weeds, they're resistant to most of the pesticides to destroy them. You must cut it off and uproot it, Yisrael. As long as there's a piece of root there, and there's fungus and bacteria on that root, uh, and there's what are the ingredient, uh, then that root is going to spring to life again. That's a fact. And that which is in our hearts, it is the root of the enemy. It must be rooted out of us. And the only way it's going to be rooted out, we must take knowledge of the Torah, and we must take the sword of Yahweh, which is sharp and two-edged, and cut this damn wickedness out of us as a nation, as a people, as the heritage of Almighty Yah. It must come out. I'm not going to prophesy smooth things to us. Tell us the truth. I don't care if my words are disoriented or harsh. Hallelujah. I want to close here with this and the confirmation for you as a nation here in Yeskel. Hallelujah. In the book of Yeskel, Ezekiel 39, move down on the road a little bit. I want to kind of reveal unto you the actions of this mind of uncleanliness and subtlety. And we as Yisraya, we have operated in this mind. Hallelujah. Yes, Ezekiel 29, 23. It says, And the go ye, the heathens, or the nations, or the nation, the heathen, shall know that Beit Yisraya went into Gala. We are people that have been and taken into captivity. And the reason we have been taken, he says, for their of on, for our sins. We're taken into captivity by Babel because of our own sins. 
We're taken in the captivity of our will because of our own of own. You cannot blame anyone, Yisrael. It's your own wickedness. It's your sins. You cannot blame anyone. And we love to blame, we love to play the blame game. He said that to me. Then you ought to grow up, man. Grow up, woman. Hallelujah. He says, And the heathen shall know that Bayat Yisrael went into captivity for their iniquity. He says, Because they, they transgressed, they were unfaithful, they transgressed against me. Therefore I hid my face from them, and I gave them into the hands of of the enemies, the adversary, the czar, the foes. And those that put them in a tight, twisted fix. So they fell all by the sword. Again, he says, again, we go back to the mishka, the uncleanliness of the defilement. According to their, uh, their uncleanliness, uh, their filthy ministerak, uh, and according to their transgressions, have I done this to them? And I've hid my face from them. Therefore, this says the sovereign Yah. He says to us as a nation, Now I will bring back again the Shabbat, the captivity of Yaakov. And I will have mercy upon the whole house of Yisrael. What a great blessing. And I will be jealous for my Kadosh name. He said, and after they have Nassad, they have carried the burden uh, at their shame and all of their trespasses whereby they have trespassed against me when they dwell safely in their land. No one will make them afraid. How do we in this hour dwell safely in the land of Yah, in the bosom of Yah? I will show you how what Shaul says in the book of Romeo, chapter 5. Verse 10. This is the tikva of Yisra'ya, that we shall dwell safely in the Erech of the land or the place that Yah intends for us to dwell. He says in the book of Romeo, chapter 5, verse 10. For if when we were enemies, O oh yea, in our minds, we were reconciled to Yah by the death of his son, Yahshua HaMashiach, he says, uh, much more, being ood or reconciled, shall we be delivered by his life. Yeah. Delivered where that we may enjoy the plenteousness and the bountifulness of the land, the place where Yah has set aside for Yisrael. We must abandon this mind that has created this hatred toward Yah, the mind that has hatred toward the mind of Omar. Yeah, we must abandon that Yisra'ya. We have been reconciled to the life and the death of Yeshua Hamashiach. And now we can dwell in the city of Shalom Yerushalayim and we can hear the sweet melodies of Omar yeah, because uh, we have been brought back. He has purchased his people. We must abandon that mind. We must not give any credence to the lies of the wicked one for we find our Shalom in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh in your shoe. And the prophet Nehum, as I close from here, he speaks of this great power of Yah that we may have understanding who his vengeance shall be upon Yisrael. As the prophecy concerning Nineveh, the book of Nehum, chapter 1, verse 2 and 3, he tells us that Yah is Kenu. He is jealous. He is one that gets angry. Yah is jealous. People don't want to deal with that Yah gets angry. And Yah revenges Naham. He takes actions against Yah revenges. Yah revenges. And he is furious. He's not going to do with an assault stroke. He's furious. Yah will take vengeance on his czar, his adversaries, his enemies. And he reserves his wrath for his enemies. His wrath is reserved for his enemies. The tribulations 
or the refining or the czar for Yisra'ya. That we are going to appreciate him even greater, Yisra'ya. That's why we may, may, may need to make sure that our lamps are burning bright. We need to all of the ru'ach of God. He reserved his wrath for those that are enemies of his mind. And those that speak against Torah. And say the Torah is not the way of Yah. He reserved his wrath for his enemy. When he says to us, Yah is slow to anger. He is great in power. And he will not acquit the wicked. Those that are rasha. Those that are condemned. Those that defy Torah. Those that in their minds are enemies. And they will not allow the Torah to reconcile. There was no way you could be reconciled to Yah. In the old covenant. But by the mandate of the Torah. And you're sure the living Torah. There's no way we can be reconciled. No other way. He said, Yah will not at all acquit the wicked. Yah has his way in the whirlwind and in the storm. And the clouds are the dust of his feet. Now that's awesome there. That's pretty bad there when they say the clouds, when he walks in the midst of his creation, that's the dust. There's nothing more beautiful than clouds. You look out here on a nice, beautiful day, sultry you see the clouds and the heavens are beautiful. War, Yah is just traversing over his creation. And we just see the dust of his feet. We that are Yisra'ya, we have been reconciled. That our minds are reconciled back to Yah. We were enemies in our minds against Yah. And now the life of Yahshua, the power of his life, the testimony of life, is in us. Because he lives, we live. We can face tomorrow, Yisra'ya. Then we are reconciled because we have the power of that life in us, Yisraya. Although it seems as though we are failures and we have fallen, uh, and yet it is by his mandate uh, he has caused us to come to rise again, Yisraya. For we are his delight. Let us not allow the enemy to develop our minds. Uh, to have a mindset that is an enemy against the Torah of Yah. We began to defy and disown the Torah. We are enemies of Yah. What is Torah? His Torah is a matter. And the commandments of Yah is truth. That is his righteousness. May the riches of Yah rest upon Yisrael. May he strengthen our bosom. May he cause us a delight. And the beauty of Yahshua HaMashiach. I am tired. How about that? Hallelujah. 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 All right. I am tired, Yisraya. That uh, talk at night, it wears me out. And that's the truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us stand to our feet. Yeah, Barak, you all. You that have joined us, we appreciate you. I know I talk sometimes too much, but that's all right. Hallelujah. May Yah Barak, you all. Let us turn. To Yerushalayim, all things we do barak you this day, Yah, for your kindness, your mercies. We ask you to touch us all and guide us, take us home safely, and give us uh, rest on this Shabbaton. Give us the Shabbaton. We barak you in Yahshua's name. Bless all those that join us, our friends and enemies. We pray for Yisra'ya scattered abroad. We pray for the Shalom of Yerushalayim. Heal us. We need your healing. And create, help us, Yah, that you created us, the mind by your Torah, to to worship you and to love you above all things. We ask all of this by your healing power in Yahshua's name. We barak you with our voices. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Ya barak you,